Hey there, YouTube. It's Justin the Junkie. How the fuck are you guys doing today? Oh, oh. You know what's the first of the money, my nigga? We chill for real. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's wake up, wake up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get up, so today this video is going to be about, you can see the title, it's uh, Bridge Laws, or I'll come up with something, or understanding why I have the trucks that I have here in Ohio, and what the kind of rules are, and I'm trying to explain to you uh, what they're really trying to do here, uh, so you guys understand out there, really it's about trying to keep the motoring public safe, but what I don't understand is, is us as, you know, truck drivers and uh, fucking business owners, you know, we have so many laws on us, but any 16-year-old kid can out, be out there driving like a jackass, which I really don't understand it. But anyway, so I'm going to try to explain to you uh, bridge weight formula. Now this, there is a national law, I'm just showing you the one in Ohio, it is very similar. Read and understand this, and then we'll let you know, you know, like I have a diagram of one of my trucks, and I'm going to explain to you why it's legal to what it's legal to, and all that type of stuff, and just try to do it the best way that I can here, because I get a lot of questions about this on my live streams, other places, man, why are your trucks so fucking big? And we're going to talk about it. I don't live in other states. All I can tell you is what states recognize uh, drop axles, okay? Uh, or, you know, in Ohio is one of them. There's some other states. I think Pennsylvania does now. West Virginia does. Can, I know Kentucky or Indiana does not. Uh, I think Tennessee offers some of them, but they stop at a certain point, I think. I don't know... Uh, this is all real confusing to me, so I'm trying to break it down into ways that you understand and I understand. So uh, we'll get right into this. So what this is, is this is source Ohio Revision Code SS5577-04B. You can see a bunch of bullshit. So the uh, the gross vehicle weight, okay, the... the the weight of the vehicle combination without load plus the weight of the load is the theory. That's the gross vehicle weight. So you have what the truck weighs plus what you can carry, and that's your end number. Uh, the maximum overload gross weight uh, and load imposed upon road services should not exceed 80,000 pounds. So you guys pretty much got that. We'll come over here. Uh, this is more technical stuff. I'll get over there in a second. Uh, the total weight imposed on the road surface by all the wheels, which those centers may include two parallel transverse vertical planes at 40 inches apart, extended across the width of the vehicle. So they want, you know, like kind of how wide the, the truck is and all that stuff. The maximum single out, out axle weight should not should not exceed 20,000 pounds. So what that means is each individual axle on the truck should not reach over 20,000 pounds. That means when it's sitting there uh, and you're loaded and they pull you up on the fucking scales that you know your front axle shouldn't be 21,500 pounds and your rear axles are going to be 15,000 pounds. That means your load's not very centered. You got too much on the front end, and that's a no-go. So this is tandem axle weight. Uh, the total weight impressed upon the road surfaces by two or more uh, consecutive axles, which those centers may include spacing parallel traverse, more than 40 inches, but should not be more than 96 inches apart. So what that means is back here, these two axles should not be uh, more than 96 inches apart. Now, on a normal truck, I don't, I don't know the centers, but I know like on heavy haul trucks, they will spread this tandem out to about 54 inch centers. It lets you carry a little bit more weight, it lets you be evenly more dispersed, um, if you get what I'm saying. 
All right, any two or more axles may not exceed the weight by computing the formula through the single axle tandem axle guidelines gross vehicle weight with the requirements. So whatever the fuck that means. Bunch of techno, technical mumbo jumbo. Okay, so this insulation is of a semi-tractor uh, illustrating the bridge late formula. So you can see down here that Okay, so what they don't want is, is that they don't want, they're going to give you an overall length down here, okay? So that's 51 feet. And how they measure that is not from the bumper to bumper. They measure it from the center line of the, the first drive axle, or, okay, the first axle, that would be your steer axle, to your last uh total axle okay out here so it's just center to center line and then they're going to have a weight for the truck okay so there then that gives you one two three four five axles okay and your total length is 51 feet so really in the dump truck world here in ohio what we are trying to do is if we had this tractor with a dump bed on it and it was only 19 feet, we could only legally carry, like, not very much weight, okay? So what they try to do is, is you want to have a straight truck that as long as you can possibly get away with and have as many axles underneath of it as you possibly can. That's what they're trying to do here in Ohio. So this is bridge formula... Uh, Examples. So this is how they do it. So uh, on a road tractor, you know that you can't be uh, 20 more than 12,000 pounds on the front. 17, 17, that's 46,000 pounds. And three axles, you're 21 foot long. So this is the formula that they use right here. So these people that measure this stuff out, these DOT guys, they're not fucking stupid. I mean, look at this math formula. I don't know what this is. This is some high fucking sh highfalutin fucking algebra trigonometry something you know so uh, we'll come down here uh, you can read this is the bridge formula so this is how they determine the actual feet okay so this is 21 feet here to there you're 51 feet total now you have from the center of this one to this to the back of this one that's the center of your kingpin to the back of the of your trailer would be the trailer but we're talking about straight trucks so just imagine there would be no dump truck 51 foot long you couldn't get it in anywhere so that's what the give and take is and when we get over to this thing I'll explain it a little bit more so if you come down here this is the bridge formulas so you're gonna do your distance distance in feet between the extremes of two or more axles or consecutive axles okay so uh, this is you know four feet you're allowed 34,000 pounds so nobody would have anything like that but alright so my sterling is I think 30 no it is 34 foot long okay uh, is what it is and uh, you know the maximum gross vehicle weight on five axles on six axles no it's down here okay so it's 26 feet because this is what it is right here so it's 26 feet in between the center of the drive the center of the drive the back drive axle and the center of the steer axle in the front of the truck now that sterling has what they call a setback axle which I will get into that over here in the next part of the section so we're allowed uh, 69,500 pounds plus, give or take, 7.5%. So that puts it up here to like 70 to 74, somewhere in there. All righty. Now the Western Star, which I did, it, you know, I'm going to do a thing on it. That one is, is about 35 feet between centers, okay? And I'm legally allowed 80,000 pounds, okay? But if you look... The gross vehicle you weight that you're allowed in this state is 80,000 pounds without a special permit. But so that means on the Western Star, it's center center of the back axle to the center of the 
the front steer axle is like 35 feet. It's like actually 34 and 9 inches or something like that. And then the overall length is 37 feet. But you can't go off overall length. You have to do center to center. So what you're trying to do is we'll get over here. This is just the bridge formula. Um, I will link this state highway patrol thing here in Ohio. If you guys want to check it out in the description, I will put this in there. And then now, if you guys are anybody's interested in having dump trucks, you kind of understand the rules uh, when you get into there. But I figure that's enough on the computer work. You guys can see, you know, really 34 feet, I'm allowed 80,000 pounds. All right, so you have this formula. You would have to figure it out. Uh, these DOT guys know it pretty well. And then we're going to talk about what gets you noticed carrying overweight and stuff like that. Uh, in the next section. So uh, here is a demonstration of uh, my Western Star, okay? Uh, now, a lot of dump trucks, uh, what you're going to have is they're going to come with a 20,000 pound steer axle. It's just a little bit heavier duty. You know, you're going to have the float tires, which are bigger. Uh, they're four and a quarters. Now, why you need four and a quarters comes back to this formula, okay? So, you're only supposed to have, have, let me try to write this down, 650 pounds per square inch, pounds per square inch of tire pressure, okay? So that means how they figure out that is, is they'll take your weight, okay, divide whatever this is, it's 20,000 pounds is what you're allowed, you divide that by okay the width of the tire which is 400 it's actually 16 and a half inches is what 400 and because it's in millimeters so 425 across okay and that makes it a lot better if we had those just little skinny tires the ground pressure would be too much and it would be you know it would the thing would want to hunt all around it would be kind of dangerous so you put the wider tires on there also you know some guys run 385s uh, you know, I run four and a quarters. Also, what the four and a quarters do is, is, is it evens out. Like if you're in soft terrain and stuff like that, it doesn't create. Think about having pizza, pizza cutters on there compared to a sheet of plywood on your tire. Okay, that's what it is. All right, so, you know, this is me in the cab and all this shit. So, you know, I know that my truck is... 35 feet long okay and I know by I have one two three four five six seven total axles okay so like if you saw in that before thing that truck was 51 feet long and it had five axles and you're allowed to carry uh, you know a certain amount of weight over that five axles which makes you 80,000 pounds well the dump trucks are trying to do the same thing. Now this truck is very long for a dump truck. You know, it has a 24 foot box on it. So this is 24 foot, uh, 24 foot there, okay. And what you're trying to do is, is that when you put these lift axles down, you're trying to even out the weight because if you owe, if you loaded this thing with let's say 25 tons now this truck weighs empty uh 29,980 uh give or take that's with the driver in it i've had it down as low as 29,500 okay so when you put 25 ton on this all right you take uh that's 50,000 pounds so 25 ton gets us to 79.9 50 would be 25, you know, that's 50,000 pounds. All right, that's 25 ton. Okay, so then you add this number and that number together, and that's your 80, it would be actually 79,500, you know, give or take, but you got 500 pounds, you can play around with fuel, or if you have a kind of a bigger driver in there, you got to calculate all this shit in. So, uh, most dump trucks come with 46,000 pound rear axles. So that means that these are bigger, beefier. Like a road tractor would come with 40,000 pound uh, rear axles. Okay. And they also come with a 12, 
12 5 to 12,000 pound front axle you can get uh, th they have a whole bunch of different front axle configurations you know what I'm saying like heavy haul trucks will be short with one axle and 20,000 pound front or 18,000 pound fronts with 46,000 pound rears but we're not talking about tractors we're talking about dump trucks so uh, what these other lift axles do here is, is that you can put these down and now what you're trying to do is get the weight distributed evenly over the truck so you're not over on one front or you're not over on your rear axles because what these air these things are on airbags and it'll lift it up now if if you load this thing with 25 ton this frame will sag in here the older that they get uh you know it'll kind of push it down so uh, these lift axles just lift the axle, lift the truck back up, get it level, make it drive real nice. Takes pressure off the front steer axle, and it'll even out what you're allowed to have back here, which is 34,000. Basically, uh, you know, no axle could be over 20,000. So they basically give you 34 back here and 20 up there, and then these are all about 10,000 pounds. Uh, most of the time, ours run with about 7,500 worth of down pressure on these things. And also, we don't have wide tires on here, so we get back into this, into what this is. Uh, so, you know, really, this is about 7,500 pounds on each one of these axles, uh, you know, whatever, to get to your 80,000 pounds. You know, what you don't want is this axle to be 10,000 pounds and this axle to be fucking 2,000 worth of pressure on it. So you're trying to even out the load. Now what gets you caught with the DOT, okay, is, is when you have a huge mound of shit, okay, up in the top of your truck where you, A, you can't tarp it, and, you know, it might be all the way in the back or all the way in the front. Well, you know that you can't, you can't get this even here. So that's what gets you kind of fucked up with the DOT, especially with a 7 axle. Now, I will tell you, uh, with a 7 axle, I don't get, we don't get pulled over very much with this thing. Uh, we've been pulled over in the Sterling a lot more than we have pulled over in this thing, just because they know it's harder to get us. You know, they're going to be, like they might be able to, you know, they don't want to write a ticket for a 500 pound over one axle weight. They want to write you a ticket when you're 20,000 pounds over the whole fucking this 80,000 pound number. So really the bridge law and why the trucks look like this is you're trying to make, you're trying to get as many axles under the thing as you possibly can. Okay. You want the ground pressure to be even on the truck. So, you know, because I'm going to tell you right now, if you put 20, if you put 18 ton in this fucker and don't put none of these lift axles down, it will not stop. It'll be forever. You will overheat your brakes. So these lift axles also have braking power under them, and it makes it to where it's a lot more controllable. Uh, you can stop, not on a dime, but you can stop significantly better uh, than what you do without it. Now, some states only recognize this as a straight truck, okay, and they will let you, like uh, Kentucky, will let you have 80,000 pounds on just a tri-axle, okay? Now, the reason that is is because uh, they are in coal country, and they have a law about coal hauling, and, or coal hauling, so they just make it a statewide rule. Uh, when I go into Kentucky, they will only count, they won't count this first lift axle here. So if I'm running over in Kentucky, I can only go to 74.5. Same thing in Indiana, uh, because they don't recognize this uh, fourth lift axle here. So that's why you see a lot of uh, six axle trucks in Ohio. Uh, most people, now Florida, I get to have a truck this long, but they don't want no lift axles underneath them. Okay, maybe one, you know, or they'll only count one. So I can have a 24 foot box, okay, and it's just fucked up how different states do it. But this is how Ohio does it, so this is where I live. Uh, you know, that's why I have all this stuff. Like I said, I'll link the, the bridge law formula. So just think about it. You're trying to get as many axles underneath the truck as you possibly can so you can carry more weight, okay. 
that's basically the formula. So now you know, like if you guys are out there looking at trucks, uh, you kind of know the formula to get what your legal weight is and what you're really looking for. Uh, you know, like I bought this truck to haul basically 80,000 pounds all the time to optimize how much I make. Uh, you know, I could get some quad axles, which would only be to here, if you will, but that doesn't, uh, it doesn't give me the maximum amount of money for the maximum amount of time that we got. You know, they cut the rate the less that your truck can haul, basically, is how they do it. So, you know, like, and you can't get any more than seven axles, uh, you know, in a straight truck. Because if, if I tried to have, let's say, an eight axle truck, well, first of all, this thing would have to be 40 foot long because there's 40 inches in between these centers. That's what you need to put these lift axles in. So, uh, you know, it would the truck would be entirely too long. It would only be good for going straight down the highway. You could never get this into a subdivision or anything like that. So you got to, you know, I would say that 35 feet between centers and centers is pretty, is about all that you're going to get. Now, okay, so on... The Western Star here is the front bumper, and I have what they call a set forward axle. Okay, now this is big in dump truck world. Okay, to understand what the set forward axle, what that is, is, is you'll see that uh, truck companies will have a B B C. Okay, that's not big black hawk. Okay, that's two. That's measurement two back of cab, which is right here. Okay, now some of them will be like 117, and then they'll have like a 122. Okay, so what that means is where this axle is located. And you'll see that on my Western Star, the front axle and the front bumper are very, very close. That's a set forward. Um, a 389 Peterbilt would be a set forward axle. Okay, uh, now the 567 dump trucks I'm getting, I'm buying a set forward axle. What that does is, is it gives me another basically five to six inches on my center line, and that half a foot is worth a thousand pounds. Now, the set forward axle trucks will not ride as good as a set back axle. So, a set back axle would be right about here, okay. And let's just say this would take it to 34, 6 inches, okay? That would be, you know, where the setback. Now, the advantages to a setback axle is, is that they turn a lot better, okay? Their turning radius is a lot better. Uh, also, they ride a lot better for the driver. These set forwards get a little... And it's like riding a bucking bull for eight hours. You know what I'm saying? So when you're out there buying trucks, you got to remember this back of cab measurement, okay, and where your axle is located. These axles back here are always going to be the same. So the Sterling that I have is a set back axle. And if you look at some of the pictures of it, you will see that the axle is farther back underneath the truck. Now the Sterling does turn a lot better. Um, I like a set forward axle just on aesthetic looks, okay? You know what I'm saying? And all that stuff. Now, also, now a three, uh, what is that, 5567 to a 389, okay? So a 389, you can get a short hood or a long hood. That's this here, okay? Now, with a 567, these are two inches shorter to the back of a cab. You can get a 389 with a back of a cab measurement of 132. Okay, so you see that it would give you another foot between centers. All right, that's why, uh, you know, a lot of guys run 389s. Like if you look at, like, let's say up in Massachusetts, you'll see guys that run 389 extended hoods on tri axles. Well, the reason they do that is, is A, they're probably not carrying as much weight as we do down here. And they're trying to get as long as humanly possible on this bridge length law. And you got to think their roads aren't as open, okay? So out west, all that stuff is uh, different because the roads are bigger. you got to think about that. Up there in Boston, you're going to have tight roads. 
you know, places like that. So the trucks are built to the roads that you have. Now, Ohio, we have a lot of flat land, all that type of shit. But, you know, pretty much hope that you guys understand uh, a little bit about what this bridge law formula is and all that stuff. You know, I tried to do the best job I can to get it to understand. So just think about it. The more axles you got, the less ground pressure you have on the roads, the less it tears up the roads. You don't get those big grooves in the highway and it's just a lot safer to drive for the motoring public that are next to you. That's basically what this law is. You know, I don't know when these laws were adapted. I have to say uh, they've been in place for a long time, probably since the federal highway system. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And all that. Uh, it was probably before that because, you know, we could talk about some other stuff. But this is the bridge law explained the best way that I can explain it. Like I said, that's the bridge law. Uh, it's basically nationwide. Uh, it's the best way that I could explain it. Uh, sorry for my goofy pictures and me writing all fucked up on it. But anyway, I'm just trying to explain this because I get a lot of questions why I have such big trucks. This is the reason why we have this stuff in Ohio. Just think about it like that. It's to keep you guys in cars and pedestrians safe and it keeps less wear and tear on the roads because if not we would be out there running around you know you know guys are going to push the limits every time but anyway hope that that helps explain to you a little bit about trucks uh if you guys have any further questions put them in the comments section and uh, I will do another video to answer. I don't really like answering YouTube comments anymore. I'm kind of burnt out on that. But other than that, check out the Patreon account. Check out uh, Junkie Shop Time on Instagram. Uh, check out uh, OnlineToolVendors.com. That helps support this channel by you guys using those Amazon links. And uh, I think that's about it. Like always, thanks for watching, guys. And I got to fucking go.